Okay, so in this video, let's take a look at the power control for a load uh, containing an AC voltage source. This is a bridge converter, as we've seen already when we discussed the general case, well, the simplest case with the resistor, as well as the non-unity power factor load case. And if you're not familiar with those videos, I'll link them in the description below so you can take a look. Uh, it's the same setup. So it's a, it's a full bridge converter and it's connecting, well, in this case, its AC terminals are connected to an inductor as well as an AC voltage source. So this is a bit more, um, I don't want to say complicated, but it's one step further than the passive load. So this is a sort of active load, right? So we've replaced the resistive load of the inverter with an AC source, and we can use um, different uh, sort of variables that are present here in this circuit in order to con uh, control the power flow, right? So a situation like this might be, like this source VAC might model, for instance, a single phase synchronous motor or a utility grid, for example. Um, for example, if it's a utility grid, let's say VAC is an AC grid, then VDC might be like a, a solar uh, array or something like that. And so VDC is providing some DC voltage, but our AC grid um, obviously needs AC voltage, and so we have some inverter providing inversion between the two so that we can uh, supply the power in the form that is required. So again, as we did in the previous video, what we're going to do is we're going to cheat a little bit because it pro produces clean waveforms. And so we have here this waveform. Okay, and so we see that there is VA. VA is the total voltage across the AC terminals and VAC is the voltage of the source. So this is part of the load essentially. Okay, and so we see that uh, relative to VAC, so VAC is a sinusoidal volt voltage, which is what you expect if you have, for instance, a, uh, let's say, a utility grid. So the grid voltage would be nice and clean relative to your converter. And so this VAC is a nice sinusoid, and it's crossing through zero, right? So it's a standard sinusoid, no shift. But we see that VA is delayed by this uh, phi. So if you saw the video with the tri-state, you notice that this is phi and it's relative to zero. In the general case, if this is not shifted, this part here should actually happen at zero. So we see that the two waveforms are shifted by phi. And we also see that because this is a tri-state waveform, so there's three levels here, one, two, three, uh, we see that this is two delta because we define the time between the, well, we, we define basically the, the midpoint of this as the uh, as the beginning of the, of the cycle. So the cycles go at based on midpoints as opposed to rising edges or falling edges. So you see this is two delta, this is phi, and everything else is fairly straightforward. So in a case like this, we see that the inverter produces this tri-state uh, voltage. Since we can control phi, and well, I mean, I shouldn't say since, because I mean, you might not know that yet, but we can control phi because we can control how this waveform is produced. So if we know what the phase of the voltage here is, then we can control how these switches all turn on and off. And if we can control that, then we can control how this uh, VA waveform is generated relative to this VAC. So we can control phi, therefore. That means uh, we can also control the phase shift between the fundamental component of IA as well as VAC, which is another handle on uh, power, basically. So now we have, not only can we control power using delta, which we did in a previous video, we can also control the power using this phi relative to, which is the sort of phase shift between uh, VAC and VA, right? So now we have multiple control handles uh, on, on the power, which allows us to do more and more elaborate things, right? So what we're going to do in this case is we're not going to derive any expressions or anything because the expressions are fairly straightforward as they were in the previous case. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a, a bit of a numerical case, and we're going to calculate, for example, uh, delta and uh, phi to see how we can sort of meet some requirements. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, suppose that VAC is defined as 400 sine 377t. And 377, for those of you that don't know, is 2 pi times 60, 60 hertz, uh, 60 hertz being the frequency of the grid in North America. And so we're going to have that. We're going to say that VDC is equal to 350. So this is 350 volts, and we're going to say that L is equal to 10 millihenries. And we're going to say that we want to transfer power, uh, a power of 10 kilowatts, okay? So, the, I mean, the, the way you, could, you would usually draw something like this 
it's kind of weird to drawing the power here, but in, in a case where you would draw the load, let's say, like this, I would draw the power something like this, right? So you usually draw power like this and say that this would be P equals 10 kilowatts, and this is going to the grid, and this is from the converter, and so that's kind of what's happening here, okay? So we want to send 10 kilowatts of power to the grid. Supposing this is a grid. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that for now because 377 is, is sort of the equivalent of 60 hertz in uh, in frequency terms. So the first thing that you'll realize is that there is, well, not realize, but I will tell you, uh, is that there is no unique combination of phi and delta for a given operating condition unless you have more information, right? So no unique combination of delta gives 10 kilowatts. So phi and delta, no combination of these gives you this exact power. There are multiple ways you can produce this power with these two variables. So we need another uh, sort of constraint. The other constraint that we're going to do is we're going to assume that the power factor is 1, meaning VAC is in phase with IA1. Okay, so there's no sort of difference in phase between these two. Okay, so the amplitude IA1 is then going to be, and so I guess maybe we should draw a sort of phase equivalent circuit. So what we're going to do is, if, if you saw the other video, we did a sort of harmonic analysis. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, imagine that you have something that kind of looks like this, because this is essentially what we have, right? We have on this side, we have VA1, and on this side, we have VAC. VAC, we're assuming, is purely sinusoidal, so there's no one, there's no multiple harmonics of this. What we're doing is we're basically creating an equivalent of the harmonics, right? So what I'm saying is uh, this, everything here is, is everything to the left of that green line is the converter, and everything to the right is the sort of load, and that's the AC terminals. So what I've done essentially is I've taken all the switches and all that behavior, and I've lumped it into a certain voltage source, and now I'm saying if I know how this voltage source behaves, because I know how the converter behaves, then I can analyze the circuit in this way. So we're saying this is L, but we're going to say this is J omega L because this is a harmonic model, right? So and this would be technically J omega 1, but we're only considering one frequency here, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, again, you can you can take this model and you can uh, extrapolate it to multiple harmonics and do this analysis for any number of harmonics, but we're only going to consider this one here. So what this means is that the amplitude, well, this is the current, let's say I A1, Right? So the amplitude, and in general this is a complex uh, amplitude, but here uh, we're going to leave it written as IA1, or maybe we can put little hats on it to, to say that it's complex, but I'll leave it like this for now. So IA1 is equal to VA1 minus VAC over J omega L. And so this is, again, this is just determining what is this current. So the current is obviously the voltage across the inductor divided by the impedance of the inductor which is just j omega l in this case. Okay, so s next what we can do is we can say that since VAC and IA1 are in phase, so that's sort of one equation, now we know that since VAC and IA1 are in phase, we know that the power will be IA1 VAC divided by 2, and we can say cos theta, but because I know cos theta is... Uh, or I know that there's there's a unity power factor, which is what we kind of imposed on this circuit. We said it's going to be a unity power factor. We know that cos theta goes to uh, 1 because theta is going to be 0. So if that's the case then, then I can determine what IA1 should be, right? Because I know that this should be 10 kilowatts. 10 kilowatts is what I'm trying to transfer. So that's the requirement here. And the reason, again, the reason I'm ignoring the cos theta term in this case is because I'm saying it's a unity power factor. So that should be a 1 here. Okay, so I've just ignored that. And so if this is true, then I can I can rearrange this and I can calculate whatever I need to, I, I, I can calculate IA1. Which IA1 value do I need in order to generate, uh, or in order to produce, I guess, 10 kilowatts worth of power to supply to the grid? And if you calculate this using VAC equals 400, you'll get that IA1 ends up equaling 50 amps. Okay, so if IA1 equals 50 amps, then what I can do is I can plug IA1 into here, and then I can do some stuff, right? So what kind of stuff? So the first thing I'm going to do is how do I express how do I express VA1 properly? The way to express VA1 properly, we did it in a previous video, 
And if you haven't already watched that video, I suggest you go back and look at it because it will be very helpful for you. Um, we'll, we'll, again, we'll link that in the description. But essentially, VA1 is going to be the magnitude of that harmonic is VDC, sorry, 4 VDC over pi, cos delta, right? And now in this case, uh, I'm going to subtract from that VAC. Now, whenever we're dealing with uh, power factors and phase shifts and all that kind of stuff, you have to consider one of these signals to be your reference. Now, because of this waveform here, I see very clearly that VAC is a regular sinusoid. By regular, I mean there's no phase shift. So it crosses zero here. It's a regular sine wave. And this also tells me that there's no phase shift. So it's natural to imagine that this is going to be our reference signal, okay? And the reason I'm referring to a reference signal is because I know that VA is going to be delayed by some phase angle. So it's delayed by a phase angle of phi. Now, the way we express a phase angle uh, in mathematical terms, or a delay in complex mathematical terms, I should say, is e to the minus j phi. Sometimes you might see it written, see it written as like phi like that as well. Um, and then like this might be like 4 VDC over pi. But it's the exact same thing. I mean, when you write it as a complex exponential, uh, it's a bit more compact and probably looks a bit more appealing, I guess. But at the end of the day, it means the exact same thing. So we have this. So this is the magnitude. And this magnitude, again, we derived this in the previous video. This is now the phase shift that we are introducing here, as according to this waveform here. And so what we see is that we can then set this up so that it can be solved. So we divide this by j omega l, and this should obviously equal 50 amps, which is what we just calculated as Ia1. Now, how do we solve this equation? It's quite straightforward, actually, because we have two things, really. We have a real component and an imaginary component, right? So I can, I can, I can simplify this equation sort of by saying 4 VDC over, that's a terribly written VDC, I apologize for that, 4 VDC over pi cos delta e to the minus j phi minus VAC equals 50 times j omega L, right? I know what omega and L are. I know omega is 377. I know L is 10 millihenry. I'm trying to find delta and I'm trying to find phi, okay? So we can probably take this one step further and say 4 VDC over pi cos delta e to the minus j phi equals uh, VAC uh, plus j times 50 times omega times L. Now, you have one equation, apparently, but actually you have two equations. So you have two equations that are the real and the imaginary. So this one's written in sort of the rectangular coordinates, they call it. This one's written in the polar form. But really, I have a magnitude here. So I have a magnitude here. This is a magnitude. And this is a phase. Well, maybe not. Maybe I should use a different color for that. And this is a phase, right? Now this will have a magnitude and a phase. So the magnitude of this will be the sum of the squares. So it'll be VAC squared plus 50 omega L squared under the root. That's the real component. And then you can do the same thing. You can take the uh, inverse tangent of the imaginary over the real, and you can say that that would be your uh, imaginary component, right? Or sorry, reactive component, whatever you want to call it. And so you can basically, what, what I'm trying to get at here is that there's two equations actually here. There's, because it's a complex equation, you have the real components and you have the imaginary components. So you can equate the real components, you can equate the imaginary components, and you can come up with two different equations. And when you come up with those two equations and you solve those two equations, which are fairly straightforward once you follow this process that I've outlined here, uh, you'll find that phi equals minus 25.2 degrees, and you'll get that delta, delta equals 7.1 degrees. Okay, so we found these two angles. So what, what do these angles really tell us? They tell us that first of all, you need to have, you need to have a three level waveform, where this here is going to be around 14 degrees since delta is 7. So you have to have this sort of zero time there. And then we also know that this VA has to be, uh, what was it, 25? Yes, 25 degrees um, phase shifted relative to VAC. And so if you're familiar with the dual active bridge, which is another converter we've looked at, I mean, we also saw in that case that a phase shift between the two 
voltage sources produces a voltage across this thing, right? So that's essentially what we're doing. I mean, it, it, like I said, in, in, in earlier videos, I've, I've mentioned that all of these converters are essentially doing the same thing. We're just doing them in different ways, and we're doing them in slightly different switching techniques. But the underlying principles are the exact same. So we see that when we have a voltage here, and we phase shift that voltage relative to this one, what we do is we produce a voltage across this thing, or we, or we can control sort of voltages across this thing. And then by, by that controlling that voltage, we can then also control the current, and then we can control the amount of power that we're transmitting. So that's what we're doing in this case. So we see it here, there's 10 kilowatts. And if we set, if we set uh, phi and delta according to these two values, we will transfer uh, 10 kilowatts to this grid. Let's say it's an AC grid. All right, so I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe to support the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.